Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Tuition Centre. Well done to you all for sitting the Tuition Centre pre-paper one yesterday. And thanks to you all for, for giving us that, that initial feedback, those of you who, who emailed in. And we're delighted that you found it a worthwhile exercise. Andrea and I are going to start here. We're going to go through the solutions and the marks given for each of the questions. So here is question one. It was a complex number question. Find the modulus of Z and show that the argument of Z is two pi over three when Z is equal to minus eight plus eight root three I. So here we go. As I always say to students, for yourselves, you should always draw the argon diagram, draw on the point, make it a little bit easier for yourself to visualize it. As we know, we're going to have to find the reference angle alpha. So it's the inverse, it's the tan of alpha is the opposite over the adjacent, eight root three over eight. So alpha is equal to pi over three. But of course, it's the argument we're looking for, the degree of rotation, anti-clockwise rotation from the positive side of the real axis to the modulus line. So if it's pi radians all the way to the straight angle, then it's going to be when I subtract from pi radians, pi over three, I'm going to get theta is equal to two pi over three radians, but we're also going to accept 120 degree, degrees. Okay, so we're going to accept it in radians, two pi over three radians, or we're going to accept 120 degrees for full marks in this question. The other part you had to do is find R. So R is equal to the square root of eight squared plus eight root three squared. So R is equal to the square root of uh, 256 equals 16 and that was a 10 mark question so this question is on a 0 4 7 8 10 scale so low partial credit here for four marks was any work of merit towards either the modulus or the argument so if you use the relevant formula and did some substitution you could get your four marks here Mid partial credit, so for seven marks, was correct modulus or argument. So if you got either of those correct, you can have mid partial credit there for seven marks. And lastly, high partial credit was for correct modulus or argument with work of merit for the other one. So if you got the modulus correct and you correctly substituted in to partly find your argument, you could get high partial credit here for eight marks. Okay. OK, so that was question one. So that was part A. That leads us into a De Moivre's theorem question where we're asked to find Z cubed, knowing that Z is equal to minus 8 plus 8 root 3i. OK, so find Z cubed, giving your answer in its simplest form. OK, so we know what Z is. We have Z is equal to uh, cos 2 pi over 3 plus i sine 2 pi over 3. OK. We know that from the fact that 16 is our, our modulus and two pi over three is our, is our argument. So now we're going to get the cubed, uh, we're going to get the power of three on both sides here because we're getting Z cubed. So we, we could do it a square bracket around all that there. So we have a power of three here on the right hand side. Now we know the Moivre's theorem, the argument is going to get multiplied by the power. So the angle is going to get multiplied by the power and the modulus is going to get raised to the power. Okay, so we get 16 to the power of three times cos two pi over three times three plus i sine two pi over three times three. So what have we got? 4096 is our 16, 16 cubed. We got cos two pi plus i sine two pi. We're going to put this into the calculator or you're going to figure out what the cos of 2 pi is and the sine of 2 pi. And what you're going to get then is you're going to end up with 4096 plus 0 i. But we also accepted 4096 for full marks. And it was five marks for that question. So this question is on a 0, 3, 4, 5 scale. So low partial credit for three marks was correct substitution to find polar form. So if you put this complex number into polar form, that's low partial credit, or if you do steps towards getting that correct, that's low partial credit. High partial credit on this question for four marks is some correct use of De Moivre's theorem. So if you had 16 to the power of three, or you multiplied the angle by three, 
that would be some correct use of the theorem and would get you high partial credit for the four marks. On this question, if you use a power of a third when you're using the Myfrey's theorem, you're capped at low partial credit. So you do not get high partial credit if your power is not the correct three. Very good. As we always say to students, you know, when we're looking at this, if this, if it's a question where it's saying like find z to the power of three, it, it's one where you're using the Moivre's theorem to and to simplify down, and you're going to have one solution. Whereas in our next part here for part C, okay, oh yes, just to say you will see in our next part, part C, that we're going to be solving the equation. But just to mention here, we also accepted this in degrees as well as radians so you're down to here 4096 cos 360 pi plus i sine 360 pi so it's 4096 plus zero i okay so that's our answer again in degrees so what have we got here our last part challenging part find the value of w okay such that w to the power of four is equal to z giving your answer in the form of a plus bi. So we've got to be careful of this. Do we want to in this form at the end? So we're a and b are an element of the real numbers. So what have we got? Well, we know what z is. So z in this case is equal to w to the power of four is equal to 16 times cos two pi over three plus i sine two pi over three. Okay. So what are we going to do here? What we can see on this line is we're getting the fourth root of both sides, the fourth root of both sides. Okay. So now we're going into what we call the general polar form. So we're going to be applying the Moivre's theorem in a moment. What we've done here is we the, the modulus is raised to the power of a quarter. And what's going to happen now in a moment is we're going to be multiplying our argument, which includes our 2n pi, by the quarter. So we're going to apply the Moivre's theorem here. OK, so 16 to the power of a quarter is 2. When I multiply my argument by the quarter, so that's going to be happening here and here, I get cos of 2 pi over 12 plus n pi over 2 plus I sine 2 pi over 12 plus n pi over 2. So when I simplify that down, I've got 2 cos pi over 6 plus n pi over 2. And the same for the I sine pi over 6 plus n pi over 2. So what's going to happen next? So we have it here. We've used the Moivre's theorem. We're in general polar form. I know because it's W to the power of four, I'm going to be looking for four answers to this question. So what have we got? We're subbing in n equals zero. So when we put n equals zero, we work it through, and we end up with an answer of the square root of three plus i. Okay. So what's happened here is this this part has disappeared because zero was substituted in for n. In this case here, when n is equal to 1, we get w1 is equal to 2 times cos 2 pi over 3 plus i sine 2 pi over 3. Again, when I simplify this down, so you can do this on, on your calculator. Just make sure you're in radian mode if you're using 2 pi over 3. You're going to get 2 times minus a half plus i times root 3 over 2. And so that becomes minus i, sorry, minus 1 plus i root 3. So you might see this, there's a little bit of a connection between these first two solutions. I keep going here, putting in now n equals 2. So I get w2 is equal to 2 times the cos of 7 pi over 6 plus i times sine of 7 pi over 6. I get 2 times minus root 3 over 2 minus i times a half. And I get minus root 3 minus i. Lastly, n equals 3. So when w, uh, w3 I'm going to get here, it's going to be 2 times cos 10 pi over 6 plus i sine 10 pi over 6. 2 times a half minus i times root 3 over 2. It's equal to 1 minus i times the square root 3. So I'm just going to point out your the, the final answers here. You're going to see the four answers again here together. And you're going to see that what happens is if you're starting with W0, it's an anti-clockwise rotation of 90 degrees for each particular one all the way back around. But you didn't have to do that. All you needed here were your answers along this side for your 10 marks.
So this question is marked on a 0, 5, 8, 10 scale. So low power to credit here for five marks was correctly using the power of a quarter in your Demivers theorem. So if you had 16 to the power of a quarter or you had the cos of 2 pi over 3 plus 2m pi plus i sine 2 pi over 3 plus 2m pi to the power of a quarter. So if you put it into that form, that's low partial credit. High partial credit here for 8 marks is one correct solution. So if you got to root of 3 plus i and you stopped or you got the others incorrect or you made mistakes, you can get high partial credit here for 8 marks. Okay. And that brings us to the end of question 1. And now we'll move on to question 2.